Good evening to you. I just want to show you something quickly. Um, if I can pull it out of my wallet. I've had it in my wallet for a couple of days now. I think my wife picked it up in the library, our local library. And uh, when I saw it, I got quite a shock. Well, I suppose with the way the world is today, I shouldn't really be shocked. Um, I'll show it to you like this. It gives you a chance to, to, to look at it, maybe freeze the, freeze the video, then you can read it yourself. And um, I'll just read to you also what's... I think it's the same thing on the back, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, you'll be able to freeze that and read it for yourself, and then I'll, I'll read it to you in a second. Well, it is actually the same thing written on the back, and it says here, for those of you that maybe didn't catch it or freeze it, it says, Pop, place of pride. Of course, we know what pride they're talking about, don't we? Um, 12 to 18-year-olds, and that was the bit that shocked me, 12 to 18-year-olds. And it says, a safe place for young LGBTQ people aged 12 to 18 to freely express themselves, um, meet others, learn, have fun and relax. And it says the sessions are every Monday, and then it says six to eight, hosted in person at the so-and-so address. And um, that was the shock for me, that a 12-year-old can, I mean, in the, in the UK, of course, it's actually pitch dark at um, eight o'clock in the evening, so whatever 12-year-old would go to this and come out at 8 o'clock in the evening, and it's in the middle of town, um, would either be going there, possibly not necessarily with their parents' permission. Uh, of course, we know they really don't need their parents' permission. Um, so this is the, uh, the situation now with this, and of course, we're going to see more and more of it. And of course, if a child of 12 wants to go to one of these things, there's no way that, uh, that uh, they can be stopped, um, possibly discouraged if they're Christian parents. Um, I suppose in many respects, the way the woke world is going, there'll be many parents that will probably encourage them to go along. And that, that is the sad thing for me, is to see all this happening. And um, it's come in and nothing seems to be said. We had one of these... Um, trans uh, people, I suppose, you know, basically a man dressed up as a woman coming into the library also recently and uh, reading stories to the children. Um, I know it's quite widespread in the US, I think it's starting up here as well, and so we've had it in our local town. But all this is starting up and um, people are having less and less to say about it. And of course, um, as we know, if you stand outside an abortion clinic and you just stand there and you're praying, you can be arrested. Uh, this has happened to a man recently, um, literally just standing outside and praying. Um, and the, uh, we have what's known in the UK as police community support officers, PCSOs. And uh, they don't have the same powers as police, but they, they can actually order an arrest, I believe. And they asked the man what he was praying about. and. I got quite angry in a way. I, I thought to myself, if it were me, I wouldn't have told them what I'm praying about because prayer is something between me and God and it's nobody's business what I'm praying about, even if I am standing in a certain place where they say I'm legally not supposed to stand. Um, so I suppose you know, we'll open ourselves up to all sorts of things. And I suppose it's the same with, um, with the distribution of these tracts that we've now put out, incidentally now, um, nearly 2,000. The second print run is now um, run down and I'm about to make the third order next week. Um, just mentioning this now as an insert that if you would like a, a pack of tracts, a batch, please um, give me the number and I can get them posted out to you. Um, one gentleman in, in the US here has asked me for a thousand. I don't have a thousand to give at the moment so we're, we're waiting on the next print run. I will uh, put again my PayPal link in the uh, in the description box, uh, and uh, if anybody would would like the tracks and would care to donate to the ministry, 
of getting them out and the expenses incurred and all that surrounds it then please do but um, there will be of course the PDF that you can download and if you want to get them printed of course at the printers I'd appreciate it if you, if you do that you'd let me know uh, if you're doing that and how many are getting printed and it would be good to know how many are actually going out but I'm quite happy to post them out. They they do um, get a bit expensive if I post out um, a large batch at a time. But uh, if you feel you need them and um, you want to share in the ministry, then I'm quite happy to do that. So as I say, everything is uh, is on track for um, the woke society that's growing and growing and. Um, Less and less dissenting voices are going to be uh, allowed. More and more censorship coming. More and more draconian laws. Today I was watching more and more videos about um, the CBDCs, the central bank digital currency, and the, the impending drop or the collapse of the money system, especially the US dollar, the rise of the BRICS, the situation amongst the BRICS nations. Those of you that don't know, the uh, I think it's Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa wanting to form a new alliance, doing away with the dollar. So we're really at the brink of things, aren't we? Um, we're really at the beginning of, of, well, the birth pains are getting stronger, basically, that's what's happening. Stronger and stronger. More and more Matthew 24. But for us as Christians, and when we start to see um, this kind of thing, popping up, literally popping up in our library. Um, we have to warn our, our families, warn our children of what's actually coming. Because our kids that are going to school are going to need re-education when they come home. There are going to be things that they're learning about. And maybe if we don't question them enough, those things will get instilled into their minds. And uh, it'll be too late to, to, to erase it because so their peer group, will, of course, will be putting pressure on them. And um, pressure to conform is the big thing with, with any, any, uh, any youngster. It's always existed, but of course it will exist a lot more now in these coming days. So um, I want to bring that word to you, and uh, as I say, um, the work goes on. Uh, I had an interesting encounter yesterday, actually. Maybe the brothers even watched me, I don't know. I was sitting in the hospital um, yesterday waiting for my wife while she had an appointment. I was sitting in the cafe. And just to my left, a couple of tables away, was a young man. And I couldn't see what he was reading, but it looked like he had a Bible in his hand. And I kept trying to look across to see, was it a Bible or wasn't it? And I had a couple of tracts with me. I'd left one on the table in the cafe. And I thought, I, I must um, approach this young man. And he put, he closed his Bible and he was about to leave. And I thought, no, it must be a Bible. And as I managed to, to get up and look at the hat that he was wearing, he had a cross on the front of the hat. So I, then I knew immediately. So I went over and I said, excuse me, um, is that a Bible you were reading? He said, yes. I said, uh, I said hey, well, here's something that you might like to look at as well. And you could research it in your Bible. I gave him the tract. And uh, he knew everything about it. He knew all about what was going on in the world. I didn't have to tell him anything. And uh, I was really pleased about that. He said he would look up the channel. And so one makes these connections. And the tract, of course, is an excellent way to make Christian connections. And it's those connections, isn't it, that we want to, to be able to network out to people and uh, to reach out to people in these days. And uh, that was a blessing. And I just knew the Lord had put me in that position. It reminded me of Philip with the eunuch, you know, when he was transported to the eunuch and he was reading the Bible. And, um, and uh, the Lord sent Philip along to help him understand the scriptures. And uh, God just puts us in certain places at certain times by his spirit. And he moves us along. So in amongst all the bad stuff, I want to encourage you that the Lord is at, is at work. In the birth pains, he is at work. Remember, he was with Daniel in the lion's den. He was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He doesn't abandon you in the difficulty. He gives us a table in the midst of our enemies. That's what it says in the Word. And uh, Yeah, I'll leave you with that, with that thought in Psalm 23. He makes me a table in the midst of my enemies. And we can have that peace and joy in our hearts. So, 
talk to you again over the weekend. Have a blessed evening.